Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. As a snake breeder, my favorite time of the year is obviously the breeding season. And trust me, we've got plenty of snakes breeding, and that's what this week's show is going to be about. You're watching Snake Bites. Here it is, this is what it's all about, being a snake breeder, hatching out these amazing, beautiful little baby snakes. But it's not as easy as just throwing two adult snakes together and popping out babies. There's a whole process that we have to go through, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you step-by-step step how we breed our colubrid snakes. The first real step in any breeding year is hibernation or cooling your animals down. That basically does a couple things. It number one, spurs females to produce follicle growth and it also helps with spermogenesis in the males, which basically just means that they have fertile sperm. Take a look at this awesome animal, by the way. This is a Pied Persian rat. It's a new project that we're working with, but that's not what this show is about. It's about breeding snakes. Now, we brought these animals out of hibernation a couple weeks ago and started to warm them up. And what we basically do is take them from 50 degrees and we slowly bring them up to about 80 degrees, but we do it over a two or three week window so we're not shocking their system. And as you can see, they're really nice and alert. After a couple weeks of warming them up when they're at their optimum temperature, then it's about feeding those females as much as you possibly can. You want to get them as chunky as possible because going into the breeding season they're going to expend a lot of energy and if they're too thin going into the season you're definitely going to have problems. You can see this little chunky monkey has been eaten like a horse. That means she's in perfect spot to start breeding well. But again, it's not like you just throw any animal together. So we have to go back and take a look at the animals and decide what we're gonna breed to what. And trust me, it's a big, big job when you have this many animals. Let's take a look at a few things that I've been working on. So when you're putting these snakes together, it's not like you're just throwing them in a big bundle and hoping for the best. You're really thinking of what's the coolest snake to breed to the next coolest snake to produce the really cool gem animals that you've been really thinking about. This is a pretty cool snake here. This is actually a charcoal sun kiss, possible head, amel blood red, bred back to a similar male. So who knows what we can come up with. Again, there's a lot of really cool project animals that I'm always working on. Take for instance, I love to Sarah corn. They're just amazing and I talk about them quite a bit in the show. Again, they're a color and pattern mutation and they're co-dominant. So this year we decided to take them to this really beautiful Dilute Black Motley. Again, I can't wait to get the Dilute gene as well as the Black Motley gene into the Tessera to see what else I'll get. So there's so many cool things. Let's check out a couple others. What country does Brian consider his second home? A, Australia, B, South Africa, or C, Canada? Answer with a comment and keep watching to see if you're right. People ask me all the time what my favorite corn snake is, and I always say I love them all, but if I had to pick, probably one of my favorites would be these Hypo Lavender Striped Corns. I don't know what it is about them, but they're just really cool. So I'm taking it to a Lavender Sunkiss this year to eventually, hopefully, produce Lavender Sunkiss Hypo Stripes, which is a mouthful, but it's gonna be a really cool snake. And then I'm also breeding that same Lavender Sunkiss into these Anri Lavenders, or what they call Moonstone. I think that could be a really sharp animal. Now these are kind of the higher end projects and I tell you what, when I'm putting snakes together it takes weeks and weeks to figure out what to breed to what, but I want to share with you my philosophy behind it. I'm really looking to produce as many of the bread and butter animals as I possibly can because again when you get into that high end animal you're only going to sell a small percentage of them, but things like this snow corn snake here you really can produce thousands of these animals because they're going to be in every local pet shop and people are going to buy them up for $20, $30, $40 a piece. So when I'm putting stuff together, I'm thinking I want to produce the majority of my production, the bread and butter, stuff that's going to sell, because after all, I got to keep the bills paid and I got to keep the money rolling in right. Then I'll take a little bit higher percentage than, say, the really high end stuff, and I'm going to want to produce stuff that what I call mid range, stuff like these hypo chocolate corn snakes, things that are going to sell anywhere from $50 to, say, $200 or $250. That's going to get the really interesting entry-level breeders. It's also going to get the people that want just a really cool snake as a pet, but you have a much larger market. Then I'm only going to take a small percentage, maybe 10 or 15 percent of my production, and try to go for that really cool stuff like the Sunkiss Hypo Lavender Stripe Corn. 
I've always said that the day that I'm not excited about producing the cheapest or most common snake that I produce is the day that I'll get out of breeding. But the truth is there's certainly something exciting about producing snakes for the very first time. So this year we're going to be taking this goat white sided brooks which I really love and we're breeding it to a jelly brooks. I have no idea what it's going to look like but it's just kind of cool to get that going and to see something for the very first time. Another animal that I'm really excited about are these actually albino ghost white Sided. This is actually one of only three in existence. We happen to have all of them and we're taking them to a bunch of different Everglades rat snakes this year in hopes to produce some really cool combos. Again, I really like the rat snakes. Or how about this one up here? This is actually an amber diffused corn and I'm actually breeding it to an amber diffused motley. That should be a really killer animal. And how about this one? I've got to show you guys this. I'm really excited about it. I talk about scaleless corns quite a bit and I talked about the Tesseros earlier in the show. Well, sure enough, we're taking this beauty female scaleless corn snake into a Tessera male. Can't wait to see what a Tessera scaleless corn snake is going to look like. It's going to be pretty awesome, man. Definitely excited this year. These guys are actually breeding right now. These are rhino rat snakes. I went to pick the male up and he's actually hooked into the female. Thank gosh I didn't pull him apart. This is actually one of the first times I've ever seen rhino rats breeding. I put them in together and I've thought they bred before and we produce babies, but I've never actually witnessed it. So this is pretty awesome. I'm gonna just go ahead and shut this drawer and leave them alone because we certainly don't want to harm that male because he can pull out and it's a loss of a hemipene or something. So let's move on to something else. Like how about these mandarin rat snakes? These are just beautiful Asianic rat snakes. And again, I always say they're one of the most gorgeous naturally occurring animals. So there's plenty of mutations I'm breeding, but there's plenty of just really beautiful snakes too. But let's go ahead and back up now and start talking about the next step. We know we've got things out of hibernation, they're feeding well, and we're obviously already starting to put males in with females. I want to go ahead and take a time to tell you how our process actually works. Let's go down here and take a look. Now that we've established we have breeding colonies, they're out of hibernation, they're feeding, they're ready to roll, we want to talk about organization because again when you're breeding snakes you want to make sure you know which male goes into which female's cages. We do that by numbering the racks. This happens to be rack number four. We have the columns starting with A and going down the alphabet and then the rows are 1 through 12. This particular animal here happens to be an A1 and as you can see from this tag we always keep that tag with this male. So every time he goes into a female's cage, that tag moves along with him. That way we can always keep track of what male fathered the clutch and what female is the dam of the clutch. But you might ask, when do you start breeding snakes? Well, you start breeding snakes when the female does what they call a pre-hibernation shed. And as you can see with this gorgeous butter corn, she just shed out. And that's how we tag them, is we'll leave this shed just hanging over the edge for a couple days. What that signifies to us is that a male needs to go in with that female. She's starting to produce follicles and she's receptive for breeding. Now, over the next four to six weeks, we're gonna feed these females every Monday and every Thursday. And every other day of the week, a male goes in with them and with any luck, about a month from now she's going to go off of food and she's going to go into her next shed cycle. That shed cycle is what they call a pre-lay shed. Seven to ten days later, hopefully you'll have a beautiful clutch of eggs and then it's just a waiting game. 60 days of incubation and we'll get some baby snakes. I tell you what guys, it's going to be a really exciting breeding season here. I'm going to keep you guys updated along the way. I have a feeling there's going to be some really cool baby shows in the near future. Josh, Sam, George, Jamie, I need to talk to you guys. What's up, man? Uh, guys, you know, it's this is a really tough thing for me, man. I've been thinking about it, but, you know, I've got some new friends from Australia, and I really think that these guys are going to do a better job than you, to be totally honest with you. They seem to be pretty motivated. They know a lot about reptiles, and I think it's time for you guys to, to move on. So we're, like, fired? No, you're not fired. You're just, yeah, vacation for the next three or four years where this Australian <laughs> crew is coming in. Wow. wow. That's f***ed up. All right, guys. Thanks for everything. I'm telling you what, I brought in a brand new Australian crew. They've got it 100% figured out. I mean, these guys are these guys are real workers, and they know a lot about reptiles. So, yeah, no, things are going to be whipped into shape here in no time. Where's everyone at? Cindy? Cindy? Cin what? What the hell are you doing? 
Bloody hell, it's hot in here. Can't stand it. Hang on, mate, hang on a minute. That doesn't look right. Let's fix this up. There you are, mate. Very well, mate. This will help you grow better. Hey, beautiful, let me show you around. Are you sure Brian's okay with that? It's okay, he lets me do this all the time. Comes to check out my python. All right. That's a knife. Oh, let's get it cranking. Yeah. Hey guys, shrimps on the barbie. They're ready. Come on. Peter? Where the heck are these people? Colin? Anybody? Where the heck are you guys? Hey! Hey! What hey. the? Hey. What the hell? Oh my god. No more! Why did you ever hire those Australians to begin with? Can, can you just do me a favor? Can you go out and smooth it over? Figure out if you can help me out. Fine. I'll take care of it. But stop doing stuff without talking to me first. So how'd it go? Well, they're going to come back. But they do have some demands. Oh gosh, what are they? They're going to make fun of Brian for a while. You guys are not worth this. Come on, man. A deal's a deal. God, what a quitter. All right, guys, so it's technically spring now, but it's still way too freaking cold for me to go outside. So I like to stay in, enjoy some board games. I personally really like Settlers of Catan, the game of life, stuff like that. I want to know what's your favorite board game. Leave a comment below and let us know. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. It's sure fun to breed all these snakes, and I can't wait till the hatching season. I have a feeling we might have a pretty cool show coming for you guys. If you want to follow any of our breeding season or animal adventures, make sure to hit me up over on Facebook and Twitter, at SnakeBitesTV. Till next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. So what's Brian's home away from home? Well, if you answered A, Australia, you were correct. Well done. Now, I'm not a venomous guy by trade, but there's just something amazing about king cobras. They're the longest venomous snake in the world. Believe it or not, they can get up to 18 foot in length, and certainly they have one wicked bite. But I don't know, guys. Just something about being this close and actually holding on to a king cobra is something that's really hard to explain.